Alrighty. Welcome, everybody. We have Daniel Spolar here on officially on the Love Across America tour. And before we begin, we want to do a quick audio check. So how do I sound? Let me know in the chat. And Daniel, how was your day today? It's a quick little audio check, not the whole story. It's good. <laughs> I made it to Chattanooga. We had some... Uh... Um, some stops to make yesterday. We actually started the Love Across America tour at 8 a.m. yesterday morning. We had to stop in Atlanta and drop off some supplies and pick some up. Um, that way we could get ready for tomorrow's dedication, Tuesday's dedication. So uh, we've been busy. Nice. That's awesome. So how do we sound in the chat? Sounds good? There's no like weird echoing happening. It's been it's been a while since we've done this tour recap, so just uh, getting all the kinks out. Hello, everybody. I think we're pretty good. Let's see. Oh, hello, Tammy. And insanity, Paul. Thanks for joining us. All right. So, Daniel. Yes. We did uh, a Love Across America tour recap with Marco TV in 2020. Uh, it's been a long time coming since then. You had to do the entire tour wearing masks, being super safe with the hospitals. It was an extra level of uh, security and health and safety. Oh, and still bringing your mask. Good etiquette. Uh, but now that we are three years later down the line, y'all are back up and running and full throttle. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what's in store for this year's Love Across America tour. Well, we have a lot of people reach out to us during the, uh, the lockdown, during the pandemic. A lot of these hospitals that we were contacting back in 2019 and even early 2020 uh, didn't have a a chance to respond to us um, because they were quite busy with their schedules. Well, with the pandemic, it helped uh, shift some things around. They weren't taking in the amount of patients uh, during the very beginning of the pandemic because they weren't sure what their protocol needed to be. Um, to our advantage, uh, they had free time to reach out to us. So it really um, helped us solidify a lot of these dedications are taking place now. And not only did the hospitals reach out to us, uh, people in their communities were uh, really focused on uh, helping their neighborhoods. So they were reaching out to us as well. So um, all that is pretty much uh, what we were focused on uh, coming into 2023. Uh, we've been talking to a lot of uh, locations, children's hospitals, Ronald McDonald House, um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, um, you know, just some new avenues for us. So we're super excited. Um, but this one, uh, Love Across America Tour was too big um, just to do in one, you know, uh, one single motion. So we wanted to break it up. We wanted to get on the, the road with May. Um, in the month of May, go to into June, but we decided to to take some of those first dedications and put them off till the fall. It just worked better for us. It saved a lot of resources that we would have had to, to stretch to, to get to those different locations. But uh, we slimmed it down to six dedications in two weeks. So it's ultra productive. Um, it's just going to be a great time. Um, we're super happy. We're uh, doing children's hospitals, Ronald McDonald homes um, along the way. So it's been a, a really uh, good year. Uh, we had a lot of support with the newer games coming out. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, how many new titles were coming at the same time, it was just total chaos. And we kept getting people uh, emailing us saying, are you gonna be doing this machine, that machine, this machine? So we were just trying to, you know, uh, just do these raffles uh, so people could 
you know, have a chance to, to win something really nice. So uh, that was a huge benefit to what we're doing now and what we'll be doing in the fall. So it's a direct correlation. For us to do these great things, we need to uh, raise the money uh, to buy the machines, to place the machines, to operate these machines. So a lot of that money really helped uh, some communities that were working on it, but it made them whole. We used that money from the, the raffles to help elevate them to where we needed to be to, to uh, you know, start working on the dedication um, dates and everything. So it's been yeah. busy. For it's those busy. who don't know about the raffle, it's the coolest thing ever. All, all the money raised in the raffles go to Project Pinball Charity and to be putting these pinball machines in the children's hospitals and Ronald McDonald's houses, et cetera. But it's literally like you uh, 50 to $75 ish a ticket. And you have an opportunity to win a brand new pinball machine. It's the best deal ever. I know several winners all across the company and they're all, uh, happy to support Project Pinball. So if y'all want to test your luck, and at the end of the day, if you don't win, you still feel good, right? Because you're donating to the charity. But uh, go to projectpinball.org, and on the top uh, bar header, you can see where you can select that. It's yeah, we wanted to do something fun. And back when I was a, a child, um, the church would do a 50-50 raffle. And it was just fun. You were hoping that, you know, uh, you could win the other side of that pot and, you know, uh, have the winnings. Uh, but at the same time, it was able to help the, the church. So that's basically what we're doing with these raffles. If you look at the, the price of the machine, uh, all we're doing is a 50-50 raffle. And we always do 200 entries only. Uh, once we receive 200 Very good odds. So we want it to be fun. We want to uh, return back to the um, pinball community. We're trying to give away these machines as much as we're trying to place them in the hospital. I think it's a, a fun, fun way uh, for people to help support what we do. And another thing I want people to know is 100% of that money goes towards our dedications. It does not go towards anything else. It helps us to place pinball machines in the children's hospital. So 100% of that money uh, goes back to the community. So I I just love what we do. Uh, I think it's a fun thing. And, you know, we could offer uh, access to these more expensive games. Uh, Maybe like the James Bond 60th comes to mind. Um, that's That was a hefty price tag. Could you imagine price. being the winner of the James Bond 60th edition through the Project Pinball Raffle? It's amazing. Well, I had a chance to talk to him uh, because we did several of those because of the huge demand. And a lot of people after the first one was completed and sold out, they're like, oh, my goodness, I didn't even know about it. Can you do another one? And I'm like, I'm not sure if we could get another one. So uh, we had to play it, you know, uh, little by little there to see if we could uh, gain access to another machine. But we had a lot of happy winners there. Uh, we did a Foo Fighters uh, limited edition that sold out. Uh, it was like ridiculous. It, it sold out in uh, like over 30 minutes, um, less than 40. I mean, it was just insane. People were propped up on their computers waiting for that to go live. And, it just, you know, it was crazy. Um, so either they like Foo Fighters or they love our charity. <laughs> I hope it's, it's a both. It's vote. both. Yeah. It's both. Uh, in the chat, we had a question asked, uh, does the raffle – I actually never knew this because I haven't won yet. But uh, – does the raffle include the shipping costs or does the winner pay the shipping? Really? What? Amazing. It's, Sign up today, you know, everybody. For, Win a pinball for your machine entry, for We take care of everything. Uh, we ship it right to your door. Uh, 
yeah, it's worry free. We uh, there's no hidden costs or anything like that. So yeah, it's all paid for. Uh, so you go out there, buy a raffle ticket, and you know there's no hidden costs whatsoever. So not for months anyway. You might have to claim it on the IRS as a, you know, uh, I think they consider it like a, a gamble, um, you know. Uh, yeah, and or, it's you know. always important that you should check your individual state. That is up to you as a person to make sure you are yeah. participating in it properly. A lot of people in the beginning, they would ask me, hey, can I participate in this in my home state? I'm like. I don't know. I'm not authoritarian. Yep, every state I, is different. I follow every single state. So, yes, before any uh, online um, interaction, raffle, what have you, you should check with your state. Always, always. Thanks, well, always. Daniel, tell us about uh, the tour that you're on right now. You are in Chattanooga, and is it? it's tomorrow that's the dedication. Yes. Right. So tell we us a little have, bit about uh, that. Yesterday we had, you know, a couple, I think it was like seven hours. Uh, we drove over 600 miles to get up into Atlanta. Uh, that way we could get closer to the dedication to get ready for it uh, on Tuesday. So we're in Chattanooga right now. We reached out uh, to final preparations. Plus we're talking to um, other you know, locations that we're doing the dedications as well. Uh, we have uh, Chattanooga is going to be tomorrow at the Ronald McDonald home. Um, we're going to be moving to Indianapolis tomorrow night um, and then um, have a day to uh, visit, you know, uh, the Indiana uh, pinball community. We're going to, you know, uh, see and meet the supporters there. But it's gonna be a double dedication on Thursday at uh, Riley's Children's Hospital and then the afternoon dedication in the Ronald McDonald House of Central uh, Indiana. So, and then the very next day, we're gonna go up to Eden Rapids. We have a uh, pinball machine. Um, it's called the School Days that we placed in a classroom for special needs. So we're gonna go back and visit and we're gonna do a uh, plaque ceremony um, attached that to the, the Oh, side that's of the so awesome. Uh, it's a wonderful program. Um, we always wanted to do that uh, for, um, you know, kids with special needs and uh, children with autism. Um, you know, just to be able to help out any way that we can. And it's a learning process for us as well. They're using it as a special tool to uh, really help uh, the social uh, aspect with uh, the kids. And we're actually doing case studies uh, through a couple different locations so we could see through their eyes um, how this is being used in the, in the classroom there and how the, the kids are taken to it. And everything that we see, it's been super positive. Um, I wish I could go through the transcripts with everybody, but oh, I'm sorry. Um, my phone was ringing. Um, that's, you know, with that, it's super positive. We're uh, so glad that uh, this pinball machine could be such a a uh, beneficial therapeutic device in so many different arenas. Um, so after that, we'll be going down to uh, Rob Burke's Pastime uh, Arcade. So we just added that uh, recently. Um, we want to see his place. So we're going to be in Ohio. That's nuts. Uh, Have you ever that. seen his collection? Like not on the Pinball Expo floor, but in all its glory? No, I always heard about it. You know, people were always saying uh, what a great collection that he was holding on to. And like you mentioned, uh, you could see just bits and pieces of it uh, come into so the So many expo. rare pieces you won't see anywhere yeah. else. It's nuts. Games I never knew existed. So, you know, just from that, I, I 
could pretty much tell that he had a, a great collection. And from the photographs uh, that I see, it's just going to be amazing. So I'm going to um, be in that vicinity. So we made a detour to, to head over there on Saturday. And then we got to uh, go down to Cincinnati um, for a dedication down there. Um, Phoebe uh, Smith, that uh, people know out of the pinball community, she reached out to us. And, and uh, she's amazing. Very amazing. Phoebe uh, is person. great. Um, but there was a someone in the pinball community that passed away, uh, Mark Combs. And Mark was such a great guy. Um, you know, Mark could change your, your you know, mood in a heartbeat. I mean, he was always upbeat. You could be tired and wore out, you know, maybe at one of these shows. And all of a sudden, he just gives you the the energy that he had. I mean, Mark was an amazing uh, person. And I was so sad to hear that he passed away. So uh, the pinball community uh, came up with a World Cup soccer, which they restored. And we just uh, put a colored DMD um, into it so we could uh, present it. But the neat thing about this machine is we uh, cut down the legs and we're lowering it uh, to where it's six inches off the ground. So people could roll right yes. up to it. If they're in the wheelchair. Small kids could walk up to it. Uh, but if you're an adult, all you have to do is place a chair in front of it and just sit at it. And it's such a great way to, to play pinball. So uh, that's something that, you know, people could look forward to. We did it twice before. Um, over at uh, the Ronald McDonald home, uh, we work with a uh, a great person out of the community. He's uh, he goes by the name of Fluke Skywalker. He's a uh, a personator of Luke Skywalker, which I think he's is a hilarious. spitting image. And yeah, he is like the nicest guy ever. But yeah, he looks straight up like Luke Skywalker. Even Mark Hamill reached out to Luke. him and oh, said, hey, you look more like me than I do. And he just thought it was amazing. And uh, JT has a huge heart. I mean, a huge heart. He just gives and gives and gives to his community. And so he's going to be coming over to the dedication, too. He, he, uh, he found out uh, the reason why uh, we're all gathering there, and he wanted to be a part of it. So. And after that, we uh, we head over to Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, to the Ronald McDonald home, and we're going to be doing two dedications there as well. Uh, the community was so supportive. They uh, raised money to, to help us uh, to buy a uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then they found out there was a need for another machine, so uh, they stepped up to donate a a uh, Comet pinball machine, so which is fantastic. So, you know, we're just busy, busy, and we're definitely blessed by uh, the people out of the community. I'm looking forward to uh, meeting Casey and Logan and Dave uh, from Chattanooga here. Um, they work very hard to, to make this happen as well. Um, yes, we're so blessed. Uh, you know, just in the pinball community, just people that uh, find us, reach out to us. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's, you know, is amazing community that we have of support. Um, it allows us to do these great things. So thank you to everybody out there. Um, so that's what the tour looks like. It's going to take place over two weeks. And a lot of movement, 3,500 miles plus, um, you know, just moving around the Road country. Road warrior. Yeah, our pinmobile's up and running. Uh, we replaced the engine last year, so she's uh, running just like a top. So, uh, yeah, we're we're really busy. Um, we're looking forward to Love Across America tour in September to uh, November. So that'll be our second half. Don't really have a lot of the details 
except we're going to be leaving Florida, going out to California, going up to, no, we'll be going to New England first for the Pentastic Show, going out to California for Pinball at the Lake, and we'll be doing dedications in between. And then go Dude, the are you driving that? That's a straight up oh, yeah. diagonal across the entire country. You're yeah, dedicated. we're going to go from Maine to California, from Florida to, you know, uh, I believe Milwaukee, uh, so up in the, up in that area. So, yeah, we're going to go, you know, all over the place. Good go catch us again. Speaking of catching you while you can, I noticed on y'all's Facebook page, too, which if everyone who's on there, you can scroll down and see if you see the pinmobile in action in the wild, so to say, you, if you take a picture and is it we post it on Facebook and tag you that then we have a chance to win a shirt or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> not only shirts, we have, out, have we have uh, so much swag right now. Um, you know, we just uh, found I can't remember. I, I apologize. Um, there's a company that we work with, and I'll I'll post it down in the comments after this, so you could find them. Um, but they work so hard at bringing uh, things to our attention that would be really nice for the community to have. They have really nice shirts um, in so many different colors. Um, they have hats, uh, mugs, you know, coffee mugs, what have you. So. I'm going to put a link down there. I apologize. Uh, you know, I should know that uh, because they help us out so much. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot of swag to give away. And how about if we do one now? We could do a giveaway right now. Yeah, we should. We um, let's. We, you want to do it at the end? We can have uh, people submit. Yeah, stay I mean... tuned. We're going to do it at the end. What we're going uh, to do is so, we'll keep it simple, okay? okay? Just like we do in the videos, we'll uh, have the people out there pick a number from 1 to 100, and we'll just pick one here. So down in the comments, you know, uh, you can start now. Put your favorite lucky number down there. And oh, and then we'll do easy. the little uh, number generation thing? Do you have it on your phone? Yeah. I'll just... I can do that. Oh, because he's or not I looking at the comments, y'all. So he's not looking at the looking comments. At the I know. I should have done the Twitch raffle. Uh, so a few questions in the chat. Uh, actually, sure. one is, uh, hi, Tammy Miller. She says, Indie Pinball is so excited for y'all to come back. Uh, we screened our documentary there last year, and it was a, a huge hit, and we hope to take that talk to more uh, film festival circuits to get more exposure for Project Pinball, but uh, the indie crew really rallied together to help get uh, some pinball machines placed up in in that state, so that's really, really awesome. Well, Thank y'all so much. We have uh, so many people out in the community, uh, like Tammy and Chase and Jeff and Chris and uh, so many people that, you know, uh, I just need to shake their hand. You know, they they made this their own mission. And, you know, we uh, just helped with, you know, the the heavy lifting of, uh, you know, just talking to the hospital. But they did everything. Um, we're actually putting in an Avengers pinball machine uh, that they're holding right now. And... They're actually holding the Jurassic Park home that we're going to be dedicating to the Ronald McDonald House. So we're going to be doing the Children's Hospital. Then, you know, we're inviting everybody to come over with us for the second dedication. So it's going to be a great day. But, you know, uh, people like uh, this community, they really make it easy for us to make this happen. Um, you know, People ask us, how long does the dedication take to plan and to you know go from start to finish? And uh, we really don't have an answer because it depends on the community that we're working with, you know, uh, because of the money that they raise, um, 100% of it goes towards their, their goal. 
So if they're highly motivated, like the Indiana crew was and uh, the Chattanooga crew was, you could get there, you know, uh, quite quickly. Um, but, you know. Yeah, with the pin lodge uh, and everything, that Indy crew raised money for their dedication uh, super fast. <laughs> they were just like, they event, event, event. Y'all they have amazing. such a great community. They have people when you come up and uh, to you know uh, donations, just hand them. Up. They uh, love the idea of uh, it going local. So you know they made it really easy for us to do our job, and it really came together really quick. There was so much excitement um, at every single turn. I mean the. Uh, the hospital was excited. The uh, Ronald McDonald House, uh, they're super excited. Um, just all these people, uh, the excitement level uh, makes our job rewarding and, you know, uh, just that much easier. Uh, so we need more people like the Indy uh, crew in uh, Chattanooga in Charlottesville. Uh, Lindsay and uh, I want to say, I can't remember his name. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have my notes in front of me, um, but they own Decades Arcade. They just did a great job. Um, same thing, just uh, making it their own mission. And they went above and beyond, and, you know, we're dedicating two machines there as well. So uh, we love you guys. We really do. Um, and I think we're fortunate. I think we're all pinball enthusiasts at heart. And we know how it makes us feel. And we could relate to giving that back to these small patients and their siblings, because uh, not only are the patients there, but their brothers, sisters are there also. And the parents are there, grandparents, uh, you know, are there. And just a whole uh, community there. Uh, we even get people uh, out of the hospital sharing with us how they use it for a therapeutic device after uh, their days concluded, like doctors, nurses, uh, physicians, administrators, you know, uh, so many people um, could benefit by a pinball machine being in, in, you know, that setting. I mean, it's just so easy to talk about this in the pinball community. Uh, they just, they get it, they understand. Is there more questions? Because uh, I love questions. <laughs> yeah, if anyone has any specific questions for Project Football, uh, go ahead and drop it in the chat. I, I was answering some of the questions, Daniel, for you earlier. Uh, you okay. are, uh, Project Pinball is a 501c3. I, I know the yes, answer. Yes, so, um, And uh, Pinball at the Lake, uh, by the way, it's now pinball at the lab. Okay. Because they do it at the Sorry. game lab, uh, the I'm new location. But it's, <laughs> I know, it used to be called pinball at the lake uh, because that was the location there running this big IFPA tournament. Lots of great players from really all across the world come to this event. And it's a, well, a they great experience. Grew, um, it was at Lake Alice, which was a fantastic place. Um, just, you know, great tournament players would show up, just uh, the whole community. And like you said, it outgrew it. It uh, became so big that uh, they do it at the game lab now. So, yes, they did change the name. I apologize to Chuck and Jim. And, uh, you know, no, uh, they were full honored because you are an OG attendee of their awesome tournament. And uh, just so. It's clear it's not at an actual lake. It's at a nice bar setting. Uh, lake Alice yeah. is a, a well, brewery. Yeah. <laughs> we learned that the hard way. Kind of like pinball at the zoo. Um, spoiler alert, it's not at an actual zoo, as amazing as that would be. Maybe one day they'll have it at an actual zoo, but it's in Kalamazoo. So, pinball That's at the zoo, funny Kalamazoo. that you say that. I was disappointed when I <laughs> went out to the ball, know. you know, at the lake. Yeah. You know, like, uh, where's, where's the, the lake? lake? It's right in the middle of Riverside, and I see no lake. So, but a great event nonetheless. Oh, it, it, it's such a great event! Such great people. The same awesome. people that bring the end to you. 
Yeah, you know, it Denver never drains stuff. in Southern California. Usually every January uh, in Riverside now, and it's definitely yeah. an amazing tournament. Not just yeah. to play in, but also just to attend and spectate. Actually, watching um, some of the earlier in discs when it was still at Museum of Pinball, and they always have the TV screens that are next to the pinball machine, so you can, as a observer, you can watch the gameplay, and that's actually one of the reasons on how I fell in love with pinball. I was watching really? all these epic players actually play the game like you know coming from a, a video arcade side and thinking that ignorantly like oh pinball is just there to take your money and then i was like oh you can do that look how he's controlling the ball oh my god did she just do that right there there's storylines in pinball it just blew my mind and then down that rabbit hole i went <laughs> well the same thing happened uh when I walked into Papa headquarters, when it was up in Carnegie, Pittsburgh, I walked in there for, I think, Papa 14. And all of a sudden, as um, soon as you get out to the floor where all the, the competitors are, and you looked overhead and you've seen the giant monitors, and you realize that uh, the players could not hide their secrets anymore. It was full display, what they were doing, and it helped elevate the game so much that it was just shared in, you know, to the, you know, the the players were so gracious. Uh, you know, all the players would help uh, elevate everybody's game around them because it made them such a, a better player as an end result because they had to elevate their game to stay ahead. And, oh, my God, they were just pioneers. I mean, seriously, they they help elevate and just, you know, show that, you know, uh, this is possible for you to, to mimic this. And yeah, you see them just, play and you're like, I want to try that, you know, and I'm going to yeah, keep trying until Bowen's. I master it like how they do it. <laughs> what about Bowen's, uh, you know, tutorials that he would do? Oh, he would be so many hours of watching those do. tutorials. <laughs> I mean, the he, nudge, he like the nudging from the plunge and stuff, destroy. like changed my game completely. Yeah, he would destroy a game at ease. And you're like, oh my God, this guy is, is phenomenal. But yeah, that's pinball. We love it. <laughs> we so, do love it. We could just go on so many different pinball tangents. But coming back to the tour, uh, sort of related to the tour because it's what you are doing. In between the dedications, which you are training for your own feat of mental and physical strength, <laughs> can I say? Um, he's thinking about it. So Daniel has signed up for the Triple Bypass Bike Race which is this yeah, epic race. <laughs> I didn't sign up for a triple bypass. My heart Bike is race, blind. bike race. And it's a, a like a 118 mile bike race that you start in basically Colorado Springs all the way through to Vail, um, yeah. up and down um, to mountains and crazy elevation climbs. Uh <laughs> Well, um, tell us a I little bit about that, it. and then I want to play the the little trailer so people can see what we're talking about. Well, I love to push myself. I love to challenge my, my myself uh, mentally, physically, um, it's emotionally. Basically, ninja warrior. And I just love doing it. I always loved uh, to push myself to uh, achieve goals that I would set, and I love being on a a bike. I grew up in Pittsburgh and we had these uh, great hills that uh, would test your skill on a bike. And then I stopped riding. I mean, I believe a lot of us uh, grew up with bikes when we were kids. When we enjoyed it. But as we get into our, our uh, maybe out of a teenage years, we, you know, leave our bike behind. And that's what happened, you know. So recently, when I would go on these tours, uh, originally I would 
go out in the evening to go for evening runs. So if I was, you know, in Boston, I would run, you know, uh, through neighborhoods in Boston. Or if I was in Washington, uh, uh, D.C., I would run around uh, the Washington Monument up to the White House and, you know, crazy stuff like that. You know, as you get older, you find out that your your knees are not, uh, you know, as sound as they used to be. So I made the shift from, you know, running to actually biking. And I enjoy it more because I get to see more of uh, those areas. Uh, so when I do something, I, I bring my passion to the foreground. I have to enjoy it. And then I become serious on, you know, pushing my myself to achieve uh, you know, higher goals, and then I become very focused on. So while I'm out on a road, it allows me to really, um, you know, stay focused. I could uh, jump on a bike and, you know, really um, burn off some energy from, you know, being in, trapped in the car. And, um, you know, it allows me that freedom of uh, clear thought while I'm out there. And plus, I get to see scenery that I wouldn't even know existed. Um, so it's just a huge passion for me. So I came up with this ridiculous idea on doing the triple bypass uh, race. Uh, it's a fondo, uh, a type of race. So I wanted to do it last year, so I was training hard, but I had uh, some setbacks. Um, while I was on Love Before oh, you, you talk it. about the setbacks, let's watch the little trailer. Do you have your phone so you could see the little trailer I cut together? Oh, yeah, yeah. I see the <clears throat> All right, y'all, I'm going to play. It's only like 40 seconds, but it's just some footage from last year, and then Dan will talk about the epic and if there's anyone in the chat that wants to join dan's bike racing team maybe you still have a chance to to do this but let's let's take a bit, look at this little highlight all right you know there's two ways to tackle this ride to get ready for a high elevation Either you come in at the last minute, give it your all, and you know see how you do, or you come out two to three weeks ahead of time to get used to the altitude. And you know I didn't have that luxury, so here I am giving it my all. Those views are amazing. Do you remember that? I really don't. <laughs> oh man, what an epic because journey. When you're on the bike like that, you have to lift your head up to actually view the scenery and during that ride I was in such a threshold of pain that I had to stay focused on uh, the road five feet in front of me so um, should I go into the details or yeah yeah you failed but that's okay because you made that effort and you had the entire universe <laughs> against you and um, this is a new year so we're trying to do it again one, yeah like a like a, all right what the, happened last year during the triple bypass well, the bike race the First thing attempt. is the, the bike race was 110 miles it goes um over three mountain um summits into three passes uh, and that's why they call it the the triple bypass. It's three mountains. You're climbing from around 7,600 up to uh, over 11 and back down. But it's like a 14 mile climb. You're descending uh, straight down for 16 miles. 
uh, going to you know speeds above uh, 38 miles an hour uh, on a bike into these you know tight S curves, you know these switchbacks curves, and just really testing your endurance. Um, the pitches are just incredible. Uh, the elevation is working against you. The, the pitch of the road is uh, just a challenge. So my training was going according to plan um, to get ready for this race. For one, I'm at an elevation of five feet above sea level down in Florida. So I always knew that being at a higher elevation was going to, you know, be harder you know, trying to get the oxygen uh, from the lungs to the muscles was going to be, you know, really tough. So there's no real way to, you know, practice for that. You could do oxygen tank at sea level, but that doesn't really help you. Uh, have to spend time in the mountain to be acclimated to that climate. So I knew that was working against me. So I wanted to press it as hard as I could. Uh, make sure that, you know, I was uh, efficient with the breathing and making sure my heart was uh, conditioned. And so then what we happened? Went on the love, and then what we happened? went on the Love Across America tour last year, if uh, people remember. We were going up through the, uh, the north uh, up into uh, New York State. So I was on my bike still doing training rides in between our dedications, and I happened to um you know uh, um, get out of the shower in the evening and thought i had a piece of dirt on me or something and i quickly found out that it was a, a tick that embedded itself into my thigh and uh it was quite scary the first thing i did was uh went on youtube to find out how to extract a, a uh a tick and you know what to look for because you hear about tick bites and Lyme disease they go you know pretty much hand in hand with uh, stories of tick bites so you know I found out that you know I was supposed to look for a red bullseye around the bite itself or a rash of some kind so um, I finished the love across the tour like a week and a half later I was feeling fine um was gearing up with the uh, training again and all of a sudden uh july 5th i found that i uh i couldn't get out of bed uh i had vertigo so bad and a headache and it just felt like i had food poisoning uh, where every single bone in my body was crying out in pain it was uh unbelievable and so i called a we were uh, so scared for you, dude. I I didn't know what was going on because I had never received the symptoms of uh, the tick bite. So I called my doctor and they were thinking that it was, uh, you know, COVID, which I told them it wasn't because that was the first thing that I did was a COVID test. I actually did uh, two COVID tests to make sure I wasn't getting a, a false negative. Um, and we rolled that out, and then they thought it was the flu in the middle of the summer. And I said, no, this is not the flu. It's something, you know, it has to be bloodborne just because of the way it was just ripping through my immune system. It had me, uh, I couldn't stand up. I had to, to crawl um, to get a glass of water. Uh, um, I had to you know, uh, do it, you know, just crawl. I could not stand up. It, it was devastating. Um, it was quite scary. I didn't know if this was a new norm. I didn't know what uh, feeling normal felt like anymore because it was day after day after day of this, uh, of this, you know, upon me. And, you know, it just, there was no, preparation it just was so devastating and you know i didn't really know the effects of lyme disease and how it just attacks your immune system so 
you know, it would it hung on for you know the rest of my training. I tried to get back onto a bike as soon as possible, and there were setbacks, and I would be uh, back in bed again, and I couldn't function. I could not, you know, even move. Uh, you go to take a shower, and the the pain was too great. My my skin was on fire. You know, I I never had a sensation like that. Um, so I I fought back as hard as I can. Um, you know, as far as you know, I can because I'm an Indian. Um, yeah, you know, and then you goal. gave me a call, and you were like, "Emoto, I got Lyme disease, but I'm still doing the race." And we, <laughs> me and Jimmy, were like no maybe not and he's like y'all need to be there in case i die let's go i'll see you in colorado <laughs> well we had so much invested at that point i had the training i had you know all the best and i wanted the experience and even my doctor begged me my girlfriend Brett begged me my riding partner begged me not to do it and my response was, I have to roll across the start line. I have to, you know, see. I just can't give in before I started. I wanted to see how far I could get. I wanted to see how my uh, body, you know, could, you know, deal with something like this. And you know, how hard the race was. There's a lot of people that sign up for this and they're all warriors. Every single one that uh, joins us and, you know, they're all warriors. You know, it, you don't sign up for this just to, to go strolling. Um, it's difficult from the very start. And, you know, there was a lot of negativity uh, going into it. Um, you know, the mindset was completely blown away. Um, you know, doubt was looming uh, because, you know, I didn't want to kill myself. You know, uh, it's not, uh, you know, something that you set out to do, but at the same time, I wanted to see how in tuned I was with my body. Um, a lot of times you could push your body uh, further than what your mind says you can and you know actually uh, like special forces uh, steel teams in um, you know delta force they have boot camps that push their their um, you know soldiers to extremes to, to show them that they could rise above uh, a certain threshold of pain so I wanted to do the same thing, but not be stupid with it. Um, riding up 14 miles of a steady climb at a average gradient of 6% uh, was painful. Um, it's, you just can't describe it. At a certain point, you stop listening to your legs and, you know, you just go into a a uh, machine mode where you're trying to fix goals um, along the way because you're not looking to do a 110 mile race you're looking to get to the aid station that's 13.5 miles you know from the start and then you're looking to uh, complete that mile uh, from there to the eight or uh, from the aid station to the, the summit and then you're looking for these small gains. And soon it wasn't even miles. It was, you know, the next bend. I would uh, spot the bend that I wanted to ride to. And, you know, it, it became inches. You know, uh, you know, it wasn't these goals anymore of proportional, you know, uh, that I had before. It was pulled back. It was inches at a certain point and it was a fight it was a fight that like i never had before it was such a, a fight for endurance and once i summited and i started going down 
Um, it was a 16 mile descent. Um, I never did 38 miles an hour on a bike um, before this point, and the speeds were uh, getting up there, um, and people were whipping past me. I mean, it was incredible. These riders, they were uh, whipping past me. So the adrenaline starts to pump after you see these other riders, uh, you know, just enjoying the ride. And I was hoping my legs would recover, uh, but as soon as we started to put them under pressure again, uh, the pain just returned. I stopped a couple times uh, to try to readjust and shake the, you know, uh, loosen up the legs. But as soon as I would start to pedal, uh, um, the fire was in my legs. Um, the breathing was okay. I was labored with the altitude. I could feel that I was labored in breathing, but, you know, uh, that wasn't the, the downfall. It was just uh, getting the oxygen into the blood to my legs. So, you know, I think uh, the Lyme disease was just, you know, kicking my butt at that point. Yeah, we made him stop. So Daniel made it about three quarters, and then we were like, we're calling it quits. At that point, we could follow him along with our van, and it was just getting dangerous, and it was just like, this well, is a feat in itself. Come on. <laughs> you know, like. The danger was I was behind the, the ranks at a certain point because uh, they could only close down these roads to uh, traffic. And all of a sudden, you know, we, uh, they were still watching me. Uh, if you remember, they had a, you know, a patrol officer with us. Yeah, yeah, making sure I didn't fly my drone is actually what that officer was doing. <laughs> no, he was making sure that, I'm you know, kidding. we were doing okay. Uh, you had your own personal uh, battle with that, guy, with that officer. But, um, no, it was very safe, but at the same time, uh, it did open the, uh, the roads up to traffic. So um, it came became a different type of... Uh, you know, race at that point, a different kind of ride. Um, and a danger, and I want to point this out, if you see a bike on the road in a bike lane, they only have so much room to navigate. And, you know, honestly, uh, I'm trying, and these cyclists are trying to avoid all kind of uh, things that could be in that bike lane. It could be a, a stick you know off of a tree that could uh you know hop up into your spokes and really you know cause problems and even uh, for a rack or crash uh glass beer cans uh, there's uh roadkill uh, unfortunately uh there and you're talking all kind of uh you know cracks in the road and potholes so if you see a cyclist, I beg you, uh, please give them uh, some room when passing. Um, share the road. Yeah, share the road. Um, and, you know, just try to do, uh, get into their mind of what they're trying to, to navigate. Um, if it was a car out there, you would understand because you would see the same debris on the road. It might be, you know, tires. It might be you know, uh, just even puddles out there. I mean, there's all kinds of hazards. So um, when they opened up that road, it opened up all kinds of those hazards as well. Instead of using the whole road, you have a, uh, a you know, bike lane that could be in pristine condition or, um, you know, unfortunately I've seen a couple holes where I would have lost my bike in uh, when I was riding up there, and I was shocked to see that. Um, I'm not sure if they had uh, orange pylons on those for uh, earlier in the race, but by the time we got there, they did, and I was just shocked. It would have, it would have ended my ride right there with injuries. Um, but uh, so 
what we're trying to do, and you showed the graphics earlier, I'm returning to the mountain this year because, for one, I'm a, you know, I'm addicted to pain, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, I didn't achieve what I wanted to last year, so I want to go back, redouble my efforts. But we wanted to do something fun. I wanted to combine the two passions together um, to help the charity that I love. And I I uh, throw my passion into that. We wanted to offer a great way to, to show support um, on the bike and support with the charity. We're going to do um, like a walk-a-thon, but on a bike. It's going to be a bike-a-thon. Um, so we're looking for people to, to help support um, us out there on the bike. So I'm going to be attempting to go 118 miles. So we have a site set up uh, on Rally Up. So if you do the raffles, you're familiar with the Rally Up site. And you could tithe, uh, you know, 25 cents a mile, a dollar a mile, uh, whatever you achieve. So if I go 43 miles like I did last year, um, you know, you would tithe, um, you know, if you're tithing a dollar per mile, it would be $43 uh, dollars that would go directly to the charity. 100% of that uh, goes back to Project Pinball. Uh, none of this goes towards uh, bikes or gear or anything. I pay for that because I'm doing it anyway. Um, yeah, let's help inspire Daniel and help Project Pinball and the dedications by watching his craziness and yeah. trying to accomplish his feat. And there's just so much to that, you know, having that big goal and and going for it no matter what is just uh, truly shows your dedication and that. Um, translates into everything y'all do for the charity as well too so uh, Jimmy and I are happy to be your support team and your video crew to document it so we'll be sharing a lot of that of your journey as well too we well, got this I had the best you got this crew. we're just riding along <laughs> um. but, I know he, he keeps trying supporting. to convince us to get bikes and ride with him but <laughs> You got this. You've seen how easy it was. You know, oh, my on, gosh. I know. Um, but, you know, uh, for one, we would like to put a team together. We would like to do more of this. I would like to um, talk about promoting health out there. Um, you know, I do monitor my heart at uh, all times. And this band actually helps me to uh, focus on the conditioning of an important muscle in everybody's body is your heart. So when I go out on a bike, um, you know, paying attention to my uh, heartbeat and, you know, to make sure that I'm not pushing it too hard because like any muscle you could pull, um, you know, say you do curls, uh, bicep curls at the, the gym, you could overwork it and actually hurt yourself. So it's the same thing. So I'm trying to promote good health on bikes. Um, get out there. Uh, you know, I guarantee that you'll feel better uh, getting out into the community. You'll uh, really meet a lot of people uh, out there that, you know, are just glad to be, uh, you know, seeing the sights and taking in the uh, the breeze and the sun and, you know, uh, everything. But at the same time, you're doing something for your conditioning. You're helping, uh, you know, uh, promote better health. And I'm going to have a website where uh, it lists all the health benefits of just getting out there and biking 15 minutes a day. You don't have to do what I do, you know, for hours. Just 15 I minutes do a that. day. I should start doing that. Um, you know, three times a week, um, you know, has huge benefits to uh, your health. It really does. So that's another reason I wanted to uh, promote this, me being on a bike. I'm very private with what I do, but I wanted to share this. If it helps promote 
or helps, uh, you know, get people out there to take a look at, you know, uh, their community still on a bike or even go running or walking or something. You know, I would be so happy to, to share uh, my joy on a bike with other people. Uh, my joy of being out in the community so yeah and you got to ride a little bit today um i'll play that yeah, video we're real out quick. There riding you look really happy out in chattanooga it was a great uh, Man, relief to get out on the bike for, amazing. you know just an hour or so getting out of the car and you're riding around in beautiful chattanooga by the chattahoochee river i'm guessing maybe I Is wouldn't it have to look it up, but. Probably. This beautiful bridge as you're going over. So you're training which is good because the triple bypass bike race is on July twenty second. Is that right? It is. So the clock's so, ticking. <laughs> I never really had a chance to explore Chattanooga in the downtown area. This was a a uh, bike ride that I found on Komoot, oh, which nice. is a, a running biking app. You could type in a city and it pulls up uh, local uh, hiking paths or biking paths or, you know, uh, running paths. So I found this on Komoot and, oh my goodness, what a beautiful day. Um, so I was able to get out there and get some fresh air uh, and come back for this interview. So, you know, this is, you know, things that I'm blessed to have a chance to do while we're on the Love Across America tour, um, get out there into different communities and, you know, uh, see the beauty uh, of these different areas. So that was up by the dam. So just a beautiful day. So, Amoto, there's another development that, uh, you know, I was considering today. We were thinking how we could take a poll where people could go out to rally up and they could vote on towards my success or my failure. Oh, you, no. you want buy. people to bet on you losing? Yeah. You would have to donate a dollar and you could get to pick, you know, if you think that I'm going to succeed or if I'm going to fail miserably. So all in fun, you know, I would love for people to go out there and bet on me. And again, all that money would go to the charity, but I think it would be fun. Uh, I think that the more people that say that Daniel is not going to be like finish the race this <laughs> this time, that's going to motivate him to go pedal mm -hmm. harder. It just gave it's my just a secret theory. away. Just a theory. <laughs> you think so? Oh yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, throughout life, you have people that jump up in your way and say, you can't do that. And you're like, watch me. I'm going to do this. So, no. I it think, is 118 you know, miles. It's 3,000 foot in elevation change. You have Lyme disease. I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm going to click on that. He's not going to make it again. <laughs> and I'm there supporting him. The yeah. odds are against you. But, you know, good effort. <laughs> well, I'm going to give it my best, and like I said, uh, I just want people to go out there and show your support. If you want to say that I'm not going to make it, I'm going to take it as you know, as lighthearted, because uh, believe it or not, it does motivate me. Um, you know, in my mind, you know, it's just a motivator. Um, you know, like I said, there's people out there that say that you can't achieve something and for whatever reason you don't believe them and you press on and you find yeah, out that me. things are achievable so you know i've been training hard i've been trying to uh tilt it into my favor obviously but 
there's things that we can't control. Uh, the weather last year was unpredictable. Um, the rain came in early. It wasn't supposed to show up until around 11 o'clock noontime. It showed up at 8 o'clock, so I was in my uh, raincoat, uh, you know, hours before it was supposed to arrive. There was lightning at one point. There was a hailstorm where, uh, you know, freezing rain were uh, hitting riders, and that was further up in the mountains. So, I mean, just because I'm training, you know, like a, a a crazy man doesn't mean that, you know, this by all means a, a given. Um, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. But so there's my two passions coming together, project pinball and, you know, my bike. And again, so. the invite's still out there. If anyone wants to join the project pinball bike racing team, come on. You got yep. a month and a few days to train, and we'll see you in Colorado. Well, another great program is Strava. Oh, uh, yeah. Get on Strava. Get on Strava because you could see my uh, training right now. You could see every single mile that I do on my trainer or out in the uh, community outdoors. Um, you could actually, we're going to post the ride as well. So you could see my progress on the bike live, um, you know, while I'm, you know, failing or achieving my goals. Um, so go out to Strava. All you have to do is uh, search for um, Project Pinball uh, Daniel, and you could uh, follow us there. I do post uh, after every single ride. So I think it would be a lot of fun. And uh, you could use Strava also for your for your uh, walking, running, uh, biking, canoeing, kayaking, uh, so many things. It'll uh, keep a log of um, what you're doing. It's like Facebook, uh, Facebook almost for, you know, uh, activities like that. Uh, but. You know, you get to control it a little bit more. It's not a a uh, uh, comment savvy, I guess, uh, offering. It's just more of seeing what your your friends are up to, what they're achieving. So go out to Strava. And I could post a link to that as well. So is there any yeah. more questions? I mean, there was so much information. Yeah, I mean, why you – don't even need to ask questions because you answer them all in your dialogue oh, wow. or your monologue. Um, so, <laughs> so just wrapping back up to the Love Across America tour, the dedication is tomorrow in Chattanooga at the Ronald McDonald House of Chattanooga. Uh, yep, and y'all are going to try to live stream, but sometimes at hospitals and um, different places like that, it's kind of hard to, and it's um, pretty busy, chaotic, but they are going to get as many photos and videos captured from the volunteers, and uh, I'll try to put together a little um, cool montage so then when we come back uh, onto this live stream recap, um, probably tomorrow evening, um, we can reflect on the wonderfulness of that dedication and the impact that it's brought to that community. So that's really exciting to see all the I smiling faces tomorrow. And you got your big yeah, Ronald yeah. McDonald shoes. I saw you already posted that, your big red shoes. Yeah, but <laughs> ready for I it. tried uh, wearing them during dedication, but they're big shoes to fill. <laughs> and and I'm so focused on, um, you know, putting legs on the pinball machine and rolling it in, it became uh, quite a chore. So uh, I didn't want to be uh, tripping all over the place with those. So um, I use them for promotional purposes only now. But, I want to um, see you ride. Um, we're going to start a new uh, fundraising tier on Rally Up for the Triple Bypass Race. And you have to, if we raise enough money, you have to do the whole ride wearing the Ronald McDonald shoes. 
<laughs> That's oh my like God. my own personal side quest. Talk about stacking that deck against me. Um, man, that would be hard. I think it would be hard just doing 10 miles uh, with those shoes. You know, uh, Like 10 this, feet. Yeah, that would be really difficult. But um, if people want to see it, that's fine. I'll do it. I'm crazy like that. But uh, back to the videos, we will uh, make the, the best effort to do that. We have to make sure that we respect the, uh, the children, the patients, the parents, and everybody in there. So we just can't uh, go in there and set the rules. We have to uh, you know, follow their protocol and etiquette. Um, so we would love to, to show everybody exactly um, every moment that, you know, we're doing these dedications. So we will try, but we do take uh, lots of photographs. Um, so, and hopefully we could get a video. Uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a small documentary in uh, Indianapolis as well. So we'll be looking forward to that. So we should have uh, some good, you know, uh, some good things to share for sure. So, uh, any questions from anybody, Mona? Anything that I failed to, to touch upon? No, I think everyone's good. I guess uh, we'll just do a quick, if everyone, what was it, one through 100? You're going to do yeah. a shirt That's raffle. Good. So, everyone in the chat that wants to participate, put a random number from one through 100. Dan is not looking at the chat. And he's just going to pick a random number and whoever is closest, closest uh, Price is Right rules, I guess. Yeah, the closest Maybe. if we have several people. You know, um, I could do a randomizer if you wish. Yeah, just do a little, yeah, hold up your phone and do a, a 1 to 100 randomizer. All right, we got lots of numbers coming through. And I have the numbers from earlier, too, I saved. Okay, quickly. I'm going to be picking. Yeah, what happens so, if people say the same number? Oh, multiple prizes. Okay, Dan, keep stupid. your number. You and Obi might be lucky. <laughs> yeah. We're here to, to make it fun for sure. Obi, I'm taking your second number. All right. We just want to have fun with this. And I want to say thank you before we leave um, to everybody out there. We really appreciate your support. Uh, Sierra, Taj, and all of our volunteers uh, really appreciate everybody's, uh, you know, just helping uh, support over these many years. Um you know, we're over 64 machines um, right now. We're at 64, I meant to say. We're going to be adding another six and then uh, more in the fall. So, you know, we're just reaching new heights and, you know, our mission keeps going and going. So we couldn't achieve that without uh, people's blessing out there to, to help us. And I'm not talking about just money donations. I'm talking about people just sharing what we do with their communities. If you want us to, you know, help your community, uh, reach out to the uh, Ronald McDonald Homes or Children's Hospital and mention our name. And then reach out to us and put us in contact with uh, these people. And, you know, that's how we... Uh, are able to get to Chattanooga and Indianapolis and Charlottesville and all these uh, cities in between. Um, because there's over 400 uh, children's hospitals out there. There's over 700 uh, hospitals that have pediatric programs. There's over uh, 178 Ronald McDonald homes out there. And we do not know every single one that could reside in your backyard. So we ask for your input um, to make this happen. So please, 
Um, contact us if you see a need in your community. And again, I want to thank all the people that helped make this possible in so many ways. And thank you to our volunteers out there. Um, our volunteer techs are amazing uh, force that, uh, you know, helps all these machines that are, you know, in these different communities. So uh, we're just blessed in so many ways. So thank you. Thank you, everybody out there. Okay. Are we ready? All right. We're ready. Let's uh, draw yeah. a number. One to 100. Yeah. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, gonna... So I have the the generator. I got a... Oh, that's not it. Ooh, we just saw something we weren't supposed to. No, I just... <laughs> Moved it. Uh, hold on, come back. I'm trying to find an angle that's perfect here. Uh, can you turn on the brightness of your screen? I have a lot of experience. Probably. Yeah, you can. You go like that, and then you go that and that. <laughs> that worked? No? Oh, come on. I'm like, the worst Put that. it back. Hold Put on. Back. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll we'll Thank make you. this better next <laughs> tomorrow. I'll it. <laughs> tomorrow okay. I'll pull up my generator. Okay, it's backwards, but it's fifty. Fifty? It went exactly yeah. to fifty. All right. I cut it right in the middle. Fifty to everybody out. Oh, there. cell processing actually said fifty. We did get a fifty. Dang. Oh, get out. Really? All right. Congratulations. So processing. Way to go. And there was no other 50s. So, uh, yeah, GG Cell. How does cell processing get their shirt? What? Uh, um, just make it easy. Um, email us at projectpinballcharity at gmail.com and just say, I was the lucky winner. And we'll have Sierra, uh, you know, ask you for your mailing address so we could ship you the, the t shirt yeah, to your board. Yeah. Shirt awesome. Yay. Congrats. That's cool. Uh, tomorrow I'll do a, I'll have it on the screen so it's all fancy. But Daniel, how about tomorrow, since the dedication is at 10 a.m. again, I'm not sure what time you're hitting the road, but do you want to just, do our this live stream format at the same time, 6 p.m. Eastern? Um, I don't think that's going to be possible unless everybody wants to see me in the car. I could uh, I could do it on my cell phone because after we uh, complete the yeah, dedication at the Ronald McDonald House, I do have to make that track the drive up to Indianapolis, which. Uh, I'm trying to recall, it's going to be like a six and a half hour drive. So chances are I'm at 24. six o'clock, I will be in the car. So if everybody wants to ride along with me, I'm good. You know, that sounds great to me. Yeah, let's yeah. try it. And if not, we'll keep you all posted. Please make sure that you do all the liking, subscribing and following. Uh, definitely on Project Pinball's Facebook page and the Marco page, and, and we'll keep y'all updated. It's going to be a bit flexible because Daniel is on the road, and he's a man on a mission, a very important pinball mission. So we appreciate your time and and effort to well, help I share this with everyone. Thank you. I appreciate everybody out there um, spending the time with me in the charity. And, you know, like I said, uh, we try to be really transparent. That way we could get everybody excited about the good things that we're doing as a charity with the help of the, the community. So, uh, you know, I appreciate people showing up and showing their support. So thank you, Emoto, for being here as well. Of course. Uh, thank you, too. And so we're going to sign off. And I'm just going to play our Project Pinball trailer at the end. Daniel, you go get some food. Yeah, plan. I definitely need that. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, Appreciate thank you. Everybody. Have a good night. Goodbye, everybody. Project Pinball helps rehabilitation. For a kid that's in a hospital, you're playing a pinball machine, and 
for the time being, you don't have to really think about where you are or what you're doing. You're focused solely on playing pinball. You know, pinball, <laughs> pinball can be fun, but it can also be therapeutic because slamming that ball around when you're angry mm. sure does make you feel a little bit better. You know what, one thing I like about it, it makes them move. Laps around the wards is replaced to a lap down to the pinball machine and standing for an hour. They have to use both hands. You kind of find yourself when you're playing pinball moving into it to play. And uh, So the kids can come in here, number one, stand, the ones are having that issue, but they can still hold on, so they get that strengthening. And then they, they're using both hands and eye and watching. So, uh, so it's going to be a great non-therapy therapy. Exactly. And having a good time. Pinball's great because it's lights, it's sounds, and you're so focused on getting that ball and hitting that target and getting those points that you're really not thinking about why you're in the hospital. You're able to distract your time away a little bit. Pinball is a way to get your mind for the moment off of whatever is happening in your personal life. Even if it is a bad situation, having to be in a hospital, seeing a pinball machine can make it all better. I just want to get back any way that I can. And my passion for pinball I think was a great partner for, you know, this giving.